Okay, and uh, thanks for letting me know when Baroness de Souza was leaving, otherwise I might have feared she was walking out on me yes, in the absolutely, course absolutely, of the absolutely. contribution. Yeah, uh, my name's John Speller, I'm uh, the Deputy Foreign Affairs Spokesman for the Labour Party, and in the last Labour government, amongst other jobs and relevant in this context, I was the Minister for Armed Forces. So I'm only too well aware of, uh, as Lucia was saying, of the cost to our troops, even, even this week, but also the enormous pride that they have in the achievements that they're seeing in the, uh, in, in, in the country. And what part of this uh, process is about is ensuring that those sacrifices that they've made and the efforts they've made are actually worthwhile uh, in, in the longer term. One of my concerns, and you'll see this if you look through Hansard at a series of questions that we've put both uh, written and oral in the chamber, is that there's been a series of conferences. There's been Istanbul, there's been Bonn, there's Chicago, we're heading off to, off to Tokyo. And in none of those do I detect the necessary sense of urgency and momentum and an understanding of the timescales that we're operating under. The drawdown is due to be completed in 2014. The only direction of travel that's going to happen is an acceleration of that. Uh, other, some countries may well pull out their troops earlier. From a load of discussions in Washington last year, I have no feeling that there will be any desire to, uh, to, to slow down in the United States. And I don't just mean on the Democrat side, I mean on the Republican side as well. So there is real urgency in addressing the post-drawdown situation and securing the gains that have, be, that, have be, that, that have been made. And so it's crucial to look at the situation that we're going to leave after 2014. Now, there's many elements of that. There's the state of the Afghan army and, uh, and police, and I could amplify on any of, in, any of these, but it would, take, it would take too long. And the, the levels of training and also the, uh, the, the levels of organisation and command and control there, and also the, uh, not just the sort of training to be effective, but uh, in, in order to deal with civil rights and respond to civil rights. So there's the level also and role of the troops from, um, from ISAF that will be remain, remain, remaining as well, because there will still be a number in a, tra in a, in a training role and in a protection role for, role, role for those troops. But what role will they have, again, in ensuring that standards are maintained? There's also the, the role which will, can be positive or negative of the neighbouring countries. All of those neighbouring countries, India, Pakistan, Iran, uh, Russia, China, uh, uh, China, and the stands as well. All of those, quite often because of ethnic connections, but also because of Afghanistan's historic, crucial, uh, crucial geostrategic role, all have an interest. They actually have a very real uh, objective interest in Afghanistan being a stable country. There is a danger that by pursuing short-term, narrow, sectional interest, they could contribute to a, uh, a destabilisation that will impact on all of the surrounding countries. It is very important, and that's why Istanbul, for example, the Istanbul conference was a bit disappointing in that, in that regard. And I do think there needs to be continuing pressure on the Foreign Office and on, the, uh, and on DFID in order to ensure that Britain is, is not just having a positive attitude, but is actually playing a, uh, a fairly dynamic and, for, and forward-leaning role on this. It is going to be extremely important in order to secure a consensus of the, of the neighbouring countries who are going to be far more intimately involved over the long, over the long term than, uh, th th than we are. Now, looking at all of those, what it could be tempting to say, and you get us a sense of this sometimes in the, in the, in the discussions, is that protection of the rights of uh, women and the gains that have been made is somehow secondary to that security, to that security, security agenda. And what actually is, it is intrinsically involved in the security, in the security agenda. As someone who's been very, very deeply involved in, in, in defence issues in opposition and in government, and still therefore through the foreign, the foreign affairs brief, as we move to a post-conflict, post-withdrawal situation of, 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 of armed force, forces, it will be absolutely crucial that we have a sustainably uh, progressive society, one that is moving forwards and not moving <coughs> That is inseparable, particularly in the context of Afghanistan, from the role of women in, uh, in, uh, in, in that society. 
It was mentioned about, uh, about economic, economic development. It is very hard to move forward economically if half your workforce is completely unengaged in the, uh, in, 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 in the economy. It is very difficult to, to, to move ahead as an, uh, as an economy or to sustain a democratic, uh, a democratic situation with, vast, with, with uh, continuing levels of mass illiteracy. And what we know, not just in Afghanistan, even in the UK, the key to literacy amongst youngsters, the most important factor, is literacy amongst mothers. If, therefore, we have a situation where we, where, 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 where we have the ongoing situation of very low levels of literacy among, among, amongst, amongst women and, therefore, amongst mothers, this will roll on from generation to generation and not just amongst the women. It will also be an inhibiting factor amongst young men, uh, amongst young men as well. Plus the fact that if you have a, a society in which va internal violence is endemic in the society, it therefore does not just keep ma maintain itself within domestic <coughs> situations or within civil dis or, or, or low level low level disorder. It is also underpinning a tendency towards feuding and to on and to ongoing violence, which is a threat to the security of everyone. It's destabilising of the uh, of, of 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 the society. So it's not only that it is morally wrong, it is also that it will lead to an inevitable insecure, insecure environment and therefore not just a threat to security in Afghanistan, but as we have seen, for example, in the situation on the Pakistan-Afghanistan border, a threat to the security of the, uh, of, of the neighbours as well. So that's why it's extremely important, the work that ActionAid has, uh, has, has been doing here. And I don't want to sound over-pessimistic on, on, on all of this because I think we also need to get the message across about the very significant gains that have been made. They've been mentioned, the legislation, the new constitution. They're important as benchmarks as well. 27% of MPs are women, 25% of government jobs, 2 million girls in school. Every year that that continues is, 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 is starting to embed that, but it needs longer for it to be achieved. And... I have to say, I don't necessarily share the optimism that without the proper security environment, that those gains can be maintained. Um, it's all, it's very, it, it is absolutely right that people have seen, uh, have seen a glimpse of democracy, that people have uh, grasped, have, have tasted on, uh, on, 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 on learning. But someone with a, uh, with a Kalashnikov and a, bar, and, and a bottle of acid can be, uh, can be very effective in actually driving, driving that back in society. Uh, conf what's it? Deng Xiaoping said to uh, to build up a hundred years may be too short, to tear down a day may be too long, and therefore there is a danger of society slipping back into the anarchy that that uh, that, that that area is only is only only too prone. Well, therefore, I am disappointed. I have to say, in what Lucia was saying about the uh, the press release, because when I put a parliamentary question to uh, Andrew Andrew Mitchell only a week ago. Uh, I was asking about what plans we had to put to the Tokyo, uh, Tokyo <coughs> conference on the position of women and also minorities as well in Afghanistan. And he said, we're working with the government of Afghanistan, Japan, and other international partners to ensure that the conference reinforces the importance of ongoing support for the rights of women and minorities as enshrined in the Afghan constitution. Um, I think it's extremely important, and I'll look at the press release when I get back and follow up uh, with a letter to Andrew Mitchell, in the light of, uh, uh, light of his parliamentary answer, I would have hoped that his press release would, have, uh, would, would, would actually have reflected that as well. And I think that's important. And I'm sure Margot's going to have a word with him as well on, uh, on, on, on that. So putting that, to, putting that together, we should not underestimate the gains. We should, however, equally not underest <coughs> underestimate the difficulties. We should pay tribute not only to the... British and Allied troops who have been uh, been securing many of those gains, but also those who've been working sometimes some at uh, considerable, even ultimate cost in the uh, in, in in the NGOs in the area, and also a tribute to those Afghan women who've taken huge risks in many cases, particularly those who have been the pioneers in uh, in, in in making progress. And we need to make sure that there is a greater degree of urgency at the Tokyo and conference and in other international fora that in these vital next 18 months secures those gains 
which as I say is not just for the benefit of the women and others in Afghanistan, is actually a contribution to a more secure world more generally.